Hi, Charlie Kosorek, Jack Bench Woodworking, and today I'm going to show you uh, what methods I used on this Tiger Maple to uh, get the figure to pop. So I needed to make a handle for this new uh, Hunter uh, carbide uh, lathe tool that I just bought and this is not a wood turning video uh, I wanted to show you the finishing technique that I used uh, with this tiger maple uh, to get the figure to pop and so I started out I had uh, some uh, chunk of tiger maple and I did some experimenting on it I took different dies and uh, tried all sorts of different techniques. After experimenting it a while, I came up with one that I liked. And uh, so then I went over to the lathe and I chucked this thing in here and I turned it. And I'm not gonna show you the turning so much because um, this isn't a turning video. Anyway, and uh, the first thing I did uh, after I got it shaped and, and sanded was I put a coat of antique cherry um, dye on here. This is a trans tint, um, happens to be one of their liquid dyes. And uh, so I put the trans tint uh, antique cherry on there and then I sanded it off uh, pretty, pretty, pretty well, uh, enough so that the, uh, the dark uh, antique cherry only showed in the soft grain, uh, the striped part of the uh, tiger maple. And so then I sanded that off and in my coloring uh, schedule, the one that I tried, I'd, I'd put the antique cherry and then I put a bright red over the top of that. Well, I accidentally <laughs> grabbed uh, the wrong one. I put orange on it instead, which worked out fine. So then I sanded that off, but not quite as completely. The antique cherry is a little darker than the orange. And so I wanted uh, it to be dark, and then I wanted the orange to just radiate just a little bit out away from uh, the soft grain, the softest grain where the antique cherry um, uh, was absorbed in. So then I sanded that off, but like I said, not quite as completely. I wanted to leave more of the orange in place than I did with the antique cherry. And then I came back uh, after that, and I applied some yellow dye and the yellow wow the yellow really really is the ticket so with the yellow dye on there now i had something that looked pretty dramatic um, so the next step i put uh, i put just a, a real thin coat of polyurethane on to seal those colors in and uh, then i after the poly was on i finished it with uh, several coats of shellac so I started out using a clear shellac and it really, it, it wasn't working the way I wanted it to because the, the colors, it was just a little too bright and a little too contrasty. And so then I switched, I started using a garnet shellac to kind of uh, tone it back a little bit, the garnet being darker. And after a few coats of the garnet shellac, then, uh, then I started to get uh, the look that I was going for. I wanted a dramatic, uh, striped grain figure, but I wanted it some warm tones, and so the uh, the garnet shellac uh, toned it back and warmed it up quite quite nicely. So then, um, once the uh, the shellac was on there, and I didn't sand in between coats of shellac, then I sanded. Uh, I, I probably could have sanded started with a little lower, but I worry about sanding through with shellac. So I started. I used a, a two thousand grit paper to sand the, uh, the shellac, uh, smooth that out a little bit. And it really didn't need much more. And once the shellac was actually flattened out, then I came back with uh, my secret weapon. <laughs> my secret weapon is uh, this turtle wax polishing compound. And this stuff is amazing. This is just amazing. You sand your finish down uh, till it's uh, almost uh, high gloss, and then you come back with this turtle wax um, polishing compound. I'll leave a link in the description to, to where I got this stuff, or you can buy it anyway on Amazon. And um, then finally, I came back uh, with some uh, regular Minwax uh, uh, wax, regular uh, finishing wax, paste wax, and that. Uh, that makes a big difference too. Adding the wax even after it's polished um, 
really makes a difference on, on the final look of the piece. So once I got it off of the lathe and I uh, cleaned with the bottom on the sander, then I, uh, I just dabbed a little bit of uh, uh, that orange dye or, or antique cherry dye on the, the bald spot on the bottom. And uh, I'll probably put some shellac on there later. I think, I think it turned out pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And then um, also with this particular one, I used uh, three, three color dyes. And I don't know if that was worthwhile or not. I'm not sure how much that really affected it. I think it did. I really think it did because when I look at this, I can see um, the three colors. On the other hand, that might be something to do with how, how I sanded it off. I'm not sure. Um, I'd, I'd, be, I'd have to do a side-by-side -side test to really know if that was effective. I think typically uh, people normally will just use two colors, you know, and you want to put the darker color on first and then you put the lighter color on second um, because otherwise the dark color coming on second would obscure the light color that we started with. So you normally start with the darker color first. Uh, this, this was a lot of fun for me. I, I, like I said, I really like how this turned out. I, uh, I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you did, please, you know, thumbs up, subscribe, share, and um, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, watching.